Hello and welcome back to Math Class in Session. New chapter, it's all about exponents. Let's start with expressions involving exponents. Principles of powers and exponents and vocabulary. Three to the fifth. This is called a power. It's a power of three. The base of this power is the three, the bottom, the base. The exponent part is the five. The exponent has a meaning, and what the exponent actually means is the number of times the base is used as a factor. So in this case, three to the fifth could be translated three, used as a factor five times because the exponent is 5. So 3 used as a factor 5 times. And it looks like this. 3 to the 5th equals 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 3 used as a factor 5 times. Let's do a couple of examples to, to see what we're talking about here. 3 to the 5th times 3 to the 3. Well, it's 3 used as a factor 5 times. So this is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 5 times times 3 to the 3, so 3 used as a factor 3 times. Now, these round brackets have no meaning, so we could write this this way. And then count all these 3s, we got 8 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's 3 used as a factor 8 times. And that's how you write that. Now, math people have a way of of avoiding writing out all of this junk in the middle and just going straight to this answer. 3 to the 5th times 3 to the 3 is 3 to the 8th. And the way is a little saying, and the saying goes like this. When you multiply powers of the same base, you keep the base and add the exponents. So we'll keep the base. So we won't go 3 times 3 is 9. We'll go 3 times 3 is 3. We'll keep the base and add the exponents. 5 plus 3 is 8. And so what we've done is we've done all of this work. What we've done, we've short-formed it. We made it 5, 3 to the 5 times 3 to the 3 is 3 to the 8. Let's do another one. 2 to the 5th divided by 2 to the 3. Now, when it, fractions are division questions, so this actually says 2 to the 5th divided by 2 to the 3. And we know that the exponent means the number of times you use 2 as a factor. So 2 used as a factor 5 times over 2 used as a factor 3 times. And so once this is written out, we can see that we can now cancel here and here and here, leaving just 2 times 2 left over. And 2 times 2 is 2 to the 2. And once again, math people do not write all this stuff out. We just go straight to the answer. 2 to the 5 over 2 to the 3 is 2 to the 2, because there's a short form way. And it goes like this. When you divide powers of the same base, you keep the base and subtract the exponents. Notice I didn't go to 2 divided by 2 is 1. Keep the base, subtract the exponents. 5 minus 3 is 2. So I've compiled all the little sayings into a chart. Product, we just did. When you multiply powers of the same base, keep the base, add the exponents. And in general, this is it done with variables or letters. a to the m times a to the n is a to the m plus n. Quotient, which is the same as dividing, 8 to the 9 divided by 8 to the 3, it's still 8. We don't go 8 divided by 8 is 1. We keep the base, subtract. 9 minus 3 is 6. In general, a to the m divided by a to the n is a to the m. Subtract n. Power of a power. So when we put an exponent on a power, the exponents in this configuration, this is where you multiply them. 2 times 3 is 6. So we can say a to the m to the n is a to the m times n. In this configuration, multiply the exponents. Power of a quotient. A quotient is a fraction. So if we take a fraction and raise it to an exponent 3, for example, 
The 3 is applied to the top and the 3 is applied to the bottom. It'll be 3 cubed over 4 cubed because of these brackets. It doesn't happen that way if the brackets aren't present. And in general, x over y to the m is x to the m over y to the m. 0 as an exponent? Well, this says use 8 as a factor 0 times. In other words, don't multiply by 8. In other words, just leave it alone or multiply by 1. That's why anything to the 0 is 1. Literally, anything to the 0 is 1. Negative exponents? 2 to the minus 3 is 1 over 2 to the 3. Notice 2 to the minus 3 is the answer is not negative. Still positive, but what happens is the base gets inverted by the negative sign. This negative sign inverts this base, this 2. Makes it 1 over 2 to the exponent 3. In general, a to the negative m is not negative. It's 1 over a to the positive m. And I've got another example of negative exponents here. 3 quarters to the negative 2, the negative sign inverts the base, makes it 4 over 3 to the positive 2, and that means square the top and square the bottom. 4 squared over 3 squared. In general, a over b to the negative n invert the base. Let's do some examples. Simplify expressions and answer with positive exponents. So we have a bracket of stuff, x to the 5 plus y to the x over x cubed, but the whole bracket is to the 0. So in other words, this is just the number 1. In this configuration, multiply the exponents. In this configuration, subtract the exponents, 15 minus 3. This negative sign inverts the base, so instead of two-thirds, it's three-halves. The brackets aren't necessary. In this configuration, because it's multiplied, this two-thirds is applied to each factor, kind of like the distributive property with the little arrows. So we get this, five to the three to the two-thirds times four to the six to the two-thirds. And this only works because it's multiplied. Now, in this configuration, we multiply the exponents. We get 6 thirds, which is 2. And in this case, we get 12 thirds, which is 4. 4 to the 4. And we have to evaluate them separately. 5 squared is 25, and 4 to the 4 is 4 squared squared. 16 squared is 256. And multiply that out. It would be good to learn how to do it in one's head. 6,400. Now the issue with this is the fact that the questions can come in so many different configurations. There's just many different ways to, to make up a question. Let's hang around some of this math and get used to some of them. Here's a, here's a way. We got a multiple over 4 times c to the minus 5. Well, what can happen here? 12 over 4 is 3. And c to the minus 5 is in the denominator with a negative exponent. And using the principle that a negative sign inverts the base, c can be shifted across this fraction line into the numerator. But in so doing, the minus 5 becomes positive. So let's do the same with the b to the minus 3, shift it across the, the fraction line and put it into the denominator and make it positive as well. And we've satisfied this requirement, positive exponents in our answer. Another example, 8 over 2, of course, will be 4. And z with a negative exponent shifts across the fraction line and becomes z to the positive 5. x to the minus 2 shifts across the fraction line to the denominator and becomes x to the positive 2. And we've got positive exponents. Here we've got a product over a denominator. Let's multiply out the numerator. 
Negative times a negative is a positive. 9 times 6 is this 54. x to the 2 times x to the negative 5. Add the exponent. So 2 plus negative 5 is negative 3. And I put a 1 on this y. Simplifying further. 54 over 3 is 18. Negative 3 subtract 2 is negative 5. And here's a trick. 1 subtract because, because we're dividing powers of the same base here with the y's. Subtract negative 4. So subtract negative means add. That's why this says y to the 5. The requirement is positive exponents, so this is a negative exponent. To make it positive, shift it across the fraction line into the denominator and make it positive. Again, lots of configurations. And there's different ways to do the problems. I suggest in this case, apply this negative sign to this base. This negative sign on the exponent inverts the base because that's what negative signs do to the base. So we simply write it upside down. The denominator becomes the numerator, the numerator becomes the denominator, and it's no longer negative 2 because we did that part of the question. Now we have to square each factor. The 4 must square, the 3 must square, y to the 4 must square, and we know that in that configuration multiply the exponents. We end up with this. 4 squared, 3 squared, y to the 8, x to the 5 times 2, 10, y to the negative 3 times 2, negative 6. But it's not simplified yet. If y is in two different places, it's not simplified. So we have to join our y's together into 1. So the question is, what exponent goes on this y? Hint, in this configuration, subtract the exponent. So it's 8, subtract negative, which is really add. That's why it's 14. Cubing something. So the, because it's multiplied, the discussion applies. A negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. P to the 3 to the 3. In that configuration, multiply the exponents. Q squared to the 3. In that configuration, multiply the exponents. It can be that simple. In this case, we do not want to go 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. We must not do that because one of these factors has an exponent on it. And that exponent takes priority. We must cube this first and then multiply by this bracket. So cubing everything in here, it'll be 3 cubed, it'll be a squared cubed, and so on. It looks like this. 3 cubed is 27. A squared cubed, multiply the exponents, B cubed, and now it's time to multiply. 27 times minus 2 is minus 54. Minus 54, A to the 6 plus 3, B to the 3 plus 2. And there we have it. And a final example. Previously I said, the, the laws apply when it's multiply. But if it's add or subtract in this numerator, we can't boost or shift this 2 to the minus 4 across this fraction line and make it 2 to the positive 4 down here because the rules don't apply because it's addition. And it only works when it's multiply over multiply. So we have to deal with each of these terms separately. 2 to the minus 4 is 1 over 2 to the 4. 2 to the minus 4 flips the base, doesn't make it negative, makes it 1 over 2 to the 4. And 2 to the 4 is 16. 1 over 2 to the 6th, 1 over 2 to the 6th is 64. And 1 over 2 to the 3, 2 to the 3 is 8. So this is 1 over 8. 
And now within this, this big fraction, we have to add fractions in the numerator for the common denominator, which will be 64. 64 is 4 times 16. So if we multiply top and bottom of this by 4, we'll get 64 on the bottom. And the top became 4 times 1. And of course, 4 plus 1 is 5 over 64. And when you divide by a fraction, it's as easy as pi. You flip the divisor and turn it into multiply. 1 over 8 becomes 8 over 1 when it's a multiplier. And this 4 plus 1 is 5 over 64. And the 64 and the 8 reduce down.